Hi, I'm Carla Brown from Trash Imagination, and today we're going to talk about how I make things from weaving plastic bags. And you can see, I'm going to start with some of the things I have already made from plastic bags so you can get an idea of how it works. So these three uh, mats, you can see they roll out like this into a mat, a rectangle. Uh, they are all made from different types of plastic bags. So this first one was made with all different colors of plastic bags, bread bags, all different colorful bags. And then this one was made all with only brown, black, and white plastic bags. And then this one was made with only transparent plastic bags. So you can see actually it kind of looks like it ends up being white after you weave them. Now my technique for weaving plastic bags, the first thing I do is I actually braid the plastic bag. So I'm going to hold this so you can sort of see. You can tell here I've woven a braid that is made out of one brown loop, one black loop, and one white loop. So that's what makes the specific look of my woven plastic bags. Now this is another item that I made by weaving plastic bags. It's like a purse. And then this was one of the very first things I made. So you can see the warp is more squiggly because I learned um, not to put quite so many warp threads in order, when you put too many, it gets kind of messy looking like this. But anyways, I was learning. And this was actually like one long mat that is just folded and then with a piece over the top for the top of the bag. And then the handle of the purse is made out of a recycled Taekwondo belt. Now this is a basket, a storage basket that I made from weaving plastic bags. The way it starts is it's a one big long mat that I then form into the shape of a U and then I make the sides out of these juice pouches and inside to give it form I've put um, some pieces of wood from clementine boxes and then I put um, fabric around the top to serve as a trim. So that is a storage basket I made from woven plastic bags. Now this last project is probably the most unusual one. So I wanted to try to imitate tree bark um, and I made really long skinny pieces um, these are all about 15 feet long and I wanted to go for uh, white just like what you might find on a birch tree and I wanted to go for gray kind of like what you'd find on a cherry tree and then brown like you'd find on a maple tree and then I interspersed little bits of white and brown and gray in all of them because when you look at tree bark usually it has this sort of model-y effect um, so you can see these roll out and they're really really long <laughs> But I, I really was pleased with the effect. I do feel like it looks a bit like tree bark. And this was a, these were in an exhibit um, that they were hanging from a really high ceiling and so they look like trees inside a building. So next I'm gonna talk about the materials that I use when I'm weaving plastic bags. The most common materials that I use are something like this. Uh, they look like newspaper bags or uh, flyer bags or this one's like a grocery bag and uh, these are my favorite to use in terms of the ease of use in terms of making a nice flat weave um, but as you can see they're not always in the most exciting colors so sometimes I have to go elsewhere to get more colorful bags uh, and you can see when you pick up these bags and you crinkle them they make slightly different sounds so this one is a very smooth plastic very easy to cut and weave and same with this one but then this one has a different sound it's a louder sound and it's going to make a more crinkly uh, uh, it's going to be a little bit different to weave but it's very similar and they're all equally good So next I'll show some bread bags and bagel bags. Uh, I love using these because you can get some nice color and they're uh, very easy to cut and weave with. The only disadvantage of bread bags is that they typically have a section like this that's um, transparent and I just think that transparent bags are less exciting. They, the, the result is less beautiful. So um, that's the only downside to, to bread bags, but I love using them. 
And then there's really big bags like this and, and something like this. This is like a chip bag. This is huge, right? So you get a lot of plastic to work with and it's also very colorful. Um, the only challenge with a bag like this is it's a little bit irregular. It's not exactly square or rectangle. So when you cut it, it can be a little tricky to cut, but it's very, very good. And you can use uh, bags from just about any type of food. Like this is marshmallows and this has some nice blue in it. So that'd be, that's a great use as well. Some grocery bags uh, are more crinkly, like I said, like this one. And they work just as well. They just, I feel like the final woven piece is not quite as soft. So if you were making something like a rug where you're gonna put your feet on it, you might use more of the other style of plastic bags. But these, you know, has some beautiful colors. So I certainly would wanna use this, this plastic bag. Now a lot of frozen food comes in plastic bags. Like uh, you can see these two examples and these are great plastic to use. Again, you get some nice bright colors. The only thing is you wanna, when you cut them open, you wanna pay attention. So like this one is cut in properly. And the reason why is because these two sides with the seams, they are not gonna be easy to weave. And because it was cut open um, along what was, I guess, in theory, the top of this bag. Um, it means that this, the loops have all these seams in it. So just be careful to not cut it this way and try to cut off, instead try to cut off the one end that has a seam and then you'll get these nice loops uh, instead. Now some foods come in a metallic type of plastic bag like this. Uh, and this is more challenging to weave for sure. And so I don't actually use this in as many pieces, but sometimes I want something that looks metallic. Uh, and if so, then it's fun to weave. This just would not be good at all for a mat because the final result will be a little bit spiky. But if you wanted to make something robot-y or uh, something like that, then it would be cool, but you can hear it. It makes a very different sound and it's just harder to work with for sure. Now, one type of plastic bag you might not think about, uh, sometimes uh, toilet paper tissue comes wrapped in a plastic bag. Sometimes it's wrapped in paper, which is better, of course. But if you get it in a plastic bag like this, uh, if you've ever bought toilet paper tissue like this, um, what you the bottoms and the tops are not very useful because there are many layers of plastic all kind of stuck to each other. So all you have to do is just gently cut off the top and the bottom, and then you get these nice long loops across the body of the bag. And finally, a really fantastic source of plastic for weaving are these supposedly disposable tablecloths. If you go to an event at a school or a church, for example, they'll often use these um, at the special events. And you'll see people just throwing them out at the end, which I find amazingly surprising. But anyway, so what I will do is run around and pick up the bags because look at this orange. I mean, and I've gotten pink and green and all different really bright colors of tablecloths. Um, the only disadvantage of using the tablecloths is that they're not an actual loop, right? It's because this is one gigantic rectangle. So when I weave them, I have to remember to tie a little knot in order to make the loop. But because this plastic is so perfect for weaving, it's nice and thin, it's very malleable and yet strong. Um, it, it's really worth it. And plus you get a ton of plastic um, from one plastic tablecloth. So I hope that you will check out my other videos about weaving plastic bags.